Chromebook adoption has grown by leaps and bounds over the last few months, and more and more people are working from home, or maybe even working from offices, doing schoolwork on Chromebooks, and that has led to more people wanting to be able to extend to multiple monitors. And we're not really sure exactly when the change took place, but over the probably last 12 months or so, at some point, Chrome OS gained the ability to finally be able to extend to multiple displays over a variety of USB Type-C docks. So we wanted to actually show this to you on camera and show you how to get up and running with more than just one extended monitor. So here's our setup, three monitors, all of them extended. So what that means, if you're not familiar with it, is that each monitor can kind of do its own thing. So I can drag from this one over to this one, over to this one. And each one can have its own stuff on it. And that's an important difference between mirroring because that's all Chrome OS could do before is mirror one display, extend to another. And so even if you had four or five monitors up, you're gonna mirror all of them and you're gonna have one extended display. And so extended displays help in productivity because obviously you can have different stuff kind of laid out on each screen and that's what people are after. At some point, Chrome OS made the transition in the last 12 to 18 months since we started tracking uh, some of this stuff and we really thought that the code additions that were coming in Chrome OS were really more about daisy chaining. So hooking to one display and then allowing that display to hook to another and then to another and to another. And while that is the case, uh, we don't have any daisy chaining monitors around, but it can do that now. MST allows for Chromebooks to move to multiple monitors from one single dock now. So we have the pluggable USB Type-C dock here. So we've got just one USB-C cord running to this Chromebook and it just understands that there are multiple monitors. For fun, we actually hooked in another USB Type-C uh, external monitor over on the side and it picked up and understood that just as well. So let's take a look at what the settings look like when you hook all of this up. Okay, so in your settings, we're gonna head to device and displays, and you'll see all three displays, and you can drag these around as you see fit. So if I'm really gonna drag it to the way that this is set up, I'm gonna have this one above and just to the left, and this one above and to the right, and then kind of move that one there. So then I can just kind of jump up to each individual screen, and then you can go down here and set different orientations for each one. You can change the resolution, uh, you can change the refresh rate, so this HP actually has a 75 hertz mode, so we can change that as well. And so all of this just works. I mean, just plug it in and all of it works right out of the box. Now, I will say while the pluggable USB-C dock has worked just perfectly with this, uh, that's not necessarily been the case like with docs like this one from a company called Vava. Um, you know, it looks nice and it's got dual HDMI out and it's got MST uh, support on it. And it worked on some Chromebooks, but it didn't work on all of them. So please understand your mileage may vary depending on the dock. If you're gonna pick up one of these docks and try to set up something like this, I would recommend going with something like the pluggable dock or something from HP or Dell who both have dual HDMI out docks. Uh, they're not cheap and that's just part of what you're paying for to get the tech that's gonna work across multiple displays. But I would definitely go with a name brand one, uh, especially the one that you know you can return in the event that for some reason it just doesn't quite work. Cause like I said with the Vava, it was kind of hit or miss between different Chromebooks. Finally, before we wrap all of this up, I just wanna show you how quickly and how well this works on multiple different Chromebooks. So this is the Acer Spin 713. This is a current generation, so 10th gen Intel chip. It's a Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM. It's, it's kind of a monster of a device. So of course you would expect this to all work, right? With a device that's this powerful. But what I wanna show you is it works with other devices that aren't nearly as powerful. All right, so let's take one step down. So this is a last gen Chromebook. This is the Pixelbook Go. This is the Core i5 version. And I'm just gonna plug this in and see what happens. It's already got the ultra wide and it's got the HP. You'll get a little bit of a blink and everybody should come up. Boom, ready to go, full resolution. And again, we have the ability to change the Hertz rate and everything just like you would expect. Thumbs up on Pixelbook Go. Now we'll take a further step down. This is the Acer 314. It's the current gen, so it's the Pentium Silver that is the most current gen of the small core Intel processors. So kind of a step up from the uh, N4000, like the Gemini Lake processors. So we're gonna plug it in, see what happens. 
and as expected, full resolution on everybody and working exactly like you'd expect. All right, let's take another step down. So this is an N4000 powered. So again, current gen, small core Intel, but this is just the N4000. So this is the entry level kind of guy that you're gonna get for that $250, $300 price range. This is the point where you stop thinking, you know, you're gonna get multi-monitor, high resolution setups, and yet, here we go. Everything just working the way it should. And you can see I can open up stuff on the screen, it doesn't matter. Uh, and 4000 processor pushing three separate displays. And finally, we have set up the ASUS C223, which is a generation and a half-ish old Chromebook that's got the lowest end N3350 Apollo Lake processor in it and four gigs of RAM. So this is not just not a powerhouse. This is a slow Chromebook that we had a really hard time recommending to anybody. And yet we plug this pluggable USB-C dock into it and it's pushing the 1440p widescreen display over here, a full HD screen over here, and its internal uh, HD screen as well. Again, if you start moving stuff around, I'm sure we're gonna run into some problems, but I'm able to drag between all the displays and use all of the displays if I have them and wanna do it from even an entry level, probably sub $200 Chromebook at this point. So we showed you all of these not to say, oh, these are the exact Chromebooks that this will work with, but instead to say, I think that this is gonna work with most Chromebooks you come across, even ones that are a couple generations old. So if you're curious of whether or not your Chromebook can get this setup going, you have a couple monitors sitting at home and are trying to find the right dock that's gonna work. Again, I can tell you that pluggables USB type C dock works. We know that it works, we have it, we've tested it, but we've tried a couple others and they don't work quite as well. So we don't know for sure exactly which ones have the right protocols in place to work. We can't test every single dock. What I would recommend is buying it from a place that has a good return policy, buy that dock, see if it hooks up, see if it works. If it does, great. If not, return the thing and maybe you might have to spend a little bit more money on, again, a name brand device that's going to make sure and get all of your displays extended to all the monitors that you have around the house. But guys, that's been it for this one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, go down there and hit the subscribe button and be sure and hit that notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.